Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting Ice Queen and I'm sipping on some wild berry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, purple violet, ultramarine blue, fallow green, Mars black, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, fire red, and deep yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush and I have a number one round synthetic brush and I will refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process and of course you could switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting a background. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm going to use are purple, black, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a nice soft lavender type of a color that I'll be using as my base coat for the entire painting. So I'm going to use my large brush to paint, but I'm going to use my medium brush to mix my color so you can see how I got to that. So this is the color that I'm going for right in through here. This is my nice lavender color. How I got to that was I used a lot of my purple violet and then what I did was I added a little bit of white and a little bit of black into it. So black and white makes gray. So what I'm in essence doing is desaturating my lavender or my uh, purple in order to make it into a lavender type of a color. You could certainly use any shade of lavender that you would like. You could make yours lighter or darker or more purple than mine. Whatever works for you is up to you. It's your painting. You get to make this however you want. Or you could do a different color. You could do like a light blue or something else for the background. So this is the color that I'm going for. I'm going to put my medium brush away now. I'm going to take out my large brush. And what I'm going to do with my large brush is paint the entire canvas with this custom color. So I know that this custom color that we created has good opacity to it, which means you can't really see through it. It's got a lot of white in it, which allows for the, um, the color to cover that white canvas pretty well and it allows it so you can't see through it too well. So I'm most likely going to do only one coat of paint on my um, surface, but you might find that you want to do two coats to get a nice solid layer to your background. That's going to be up to you. We are going to be doing, my canvas is a little loud today, <laughs> we are going to be doing a lot of other details on top of this background. So if you're, if you still have a little bit of streakiness or it's not covering exactly as much as you want it to, the future steps with us adding all of our sparkles and our stairs and our icicle stuff that will 
cover up any imperfections or streakiness that you may have on this first coat. So it's going to provide this type of color will provide a good coverage, but it might not provide a perfect coverage is kind of the moral to my story. <laughs> and if you wanted to do a second coat, you certainly could. I'm most likely just going to be doing the one coat on mine, unless it's too streaky for me once it dries, but I have a feeling I'm just going to be doing the one. But once I get it all on here in order to get a nice, even um, leveled paint, what I do is I will just go back and forth left to right. So this will level out and also fill in perhaps some spots that I missed. It'll make my paint nice and flat to the surface of my canvas. And then once I've got this done, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint some atmospheric dimension in our background and we're going to start our stairs. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. I do recommend before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. You can do as I did and just pull out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what we're going to be doing is separating out our um, stairs from the background and then we'll be um, creating some nice atmospheric dimension in the background. I'm going to be using brown, green, blue and my custom lavender color. But what I'm going to first do is I'm going to do the outline of the stairs. I'm going to be using my large brush, I'm going to put a tiny bit of blue and green on my brush. I don't need a lot, just a teeny tiny bit of both. I'm going to come up into the right hand corner of my canvas. I'm going to give myself a marker that's about two inches down my canvas, so somewhere in through there. Then I'm going to come down to the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to come up about two and a half to three inches. Give myself a marker. I'm going to come up from there about an inch and a half give myself a marker, and then I'm going to come way over to the left hand side of my canvas. I'm going to come up, I would say about three, three and a half inches. Let me see how, where this is in relationship to these two. It's about kind of right in between these two markers is about the height that I have this one over here. And then I'm about two more inches above that another marker. So I'm going to connect here to here here to here, here to here, and here. So this one dot is going to get connected to all four of these markers. I'm going to bring it in a swooping kind of line. I'm going to start from here and do this top marker first. So I'm really just going to give myself a loose kind of sketcherly type of a line. I don't need to do anything fancy, just something that's going to connect these. Then I'm going to take this kind of halfway down this line and I'm going to disconnect it right about in through here. And this is going to connect to here. Then I'm going to take with this brush and I'm going to just do a swirling type of brush stroke to fill in this little section in through here. I'm picking up a combination of the blue and the green. You could certainly do any color that you want. I'm just looking for a pretty dark start to these specific areas. And then I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side. So again, just picking up my blue and green. I'm going to start up and through here. I'm going to come down in this direction and bring this. We're going to connect it to the top marker. So as I come down in through here, I'm going to dip it down like this. And then I'm going to bring it back up, like kind of in a more angled type of a way like that. And the same thing, I'm going to kind of disconnect this, I would say somewhere in in through here is where I can disconnect this and then just bring it down like this and connect it to here and I'm going to color it in the same way with this swirling type of emotion. motion. Uh, you can certainly make yours again lighter or darker or more blue than mine or more green than mine. That's going to be up to you. I just chose to use this as my color palette because it looked like it would represent ice quite well. <laughs> so I figured we'd, we'd get some good effects with this. So once I've got that done, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my atmospheric dimension in these two sections in through here. I want it really dark up at the top, maybe 
kind of dark down at the bottom, a little darker over here, and then lighter kind of just in that middle section. So I'm gonna be using a combination of brown, blue, and green in order to get the darkness where I want it, and then I'm gonna just fade it into this lavender color. So my brush already has blue and green on it, so now I'm gonna pick up a touch of brown as well. I'm gonna start up in this top left-hand corner, and I'm gonna be using this uh, scrubbing or circular type of brush stroke in order to get it on here. I'm gonna keep reloading my brush with those three colors, and again, just a teeny tiny, dip, a teeny tiny amount on the edge of my brush will do just fine and I'm gonna go up towards this top in through here. I feel like I want a little bit more blue in the equation and I want it darker up at the top. So that's where I am concentrating the color right now. And then what I'll do is I'll get it to fade down into the purpley stuff or the lavender type of a color. I want kind of a soft transition, so I am using this kind of scrubbing type of a technique. I have not picked up my lavender yet, and I'm actually gonna wait to do that until I get all this dark stuff on here, and then I'll utilize that lavender to just kind of um, get these colors to blend in with one another. So this is looking pretty good up in through here, and I know it'll dry a little bit darker than it is when it's wet, so I'm mentally planning for that. I picked up those three colors again. I'm gonna start over in through here, and again, just kind of using my brush in a circular type of brush stroke to get this darker color on in through here. I'm gonna put some down by my um, stairway in through here. Again, just reloaded my brush with the same colors. And of course, as you're going through this process, if you're finding that one color is speaking to you more than another color, you could certainly go for more of that specific color. We're gonna be putting some ice at the top of this railing in through here later, so that's why I'm just using like a thin coat right now so I can still see the outline of that railing. So this is looking pretty good. I think I want some of this down on this side as well. So again, just those three colors. You could alternate the three colors or you could use them at the same time on your brush as I'm doing. That again is gonna be a personal preference on your part. And then maybe I'm gonna pick up just a touch more blue in through here and get this to kind of get that, that glow to it. And then I'm gonna do a similar thought with this soft stuff to the stairs. So I'm gonna just pick up those three colors, brown, green, and blue, and I'm gonna be using a horizontal type of a brush stroke in order to just give myself this illusion of um, horizontal lines for the steps. I, I'm not in need of making each step pop out as its own step right now. All I'm looking to do at this point is just kind of give myself the information as to to um, the directional brush stroke that I need for these stairs to look like they're going in a horizontal way. And I'm just making sure I'm kind of going horizontally and not diagonally. And this is just gonna incorporate those background colors and those cool, um, I see kind of colors right into my stairs. And of course, you can have yours, again, brighter or darker or lighter, whatever works for you. I'm gonna go right up in through here, just kind of using this horizontal brush stroke. Again, not, not concerned if I get each step to look like its own step. We will accomplish that later. And then once I've got that, I'm gonna start picking up my lavender color. So on my dirty brush, I picked up my lavender so I can get this these center areas to um, blend in with that softer exterior or that um, kind of atmospheric dimension that I did on the outside. And then I'm just gonna use this for this entire interior area. If your brush was really overloaded with the blue, green, and brown at this point, you could certainly wash your brush in order to put this lavender on here in a cohesive type of a way, but I don't have much of those other colors on my brush, so I'm able to kind of just get away with doing this nice dry brush right um, in conjunction with that other layer that I had done. And then what I would do is just let it dry. If there's any areas that I want to lighten up or darken or anything along that line, I certainly would do that. And then we are going to be using 
our medium brush for the next step. So you can put your large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to finish our stairs and we're gonna paint some icicles hanging from the top of the canvas and the stairs. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm gonna use are green, blue, brown, white, and if I need to use any other colors, I will and I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself two icicle-y kind of colors, a light blue and a light green. So I have pre-mixed them on my palette. I will show you how I got to them. So this is my light blue and this is my light green. I'm gonna start with the light green. How I got to that was I used my phthalo green. I also used a little bit of brown and white. So what I'm in essence doing is the phthalo green is super duper powerful. It's got a lot of intense vibrancy to it. And I wanted this to be a little bit duller and softer for my ice queen. <laughs> so that's where I came up with kind of this minty green type of a color. So that's how I got to that color. Then how I got to my light blue was I used some of my light green not a lot, just a little bit. And then I added ultramarine blue and white to it. So I'm creating a light blue that's got the hint or a complementary hint of a color to my light green. I just need a little bit more white in through there. And of course, yours can be lighter or darker or greener or bluer, whatever works for you. So those are the two icy colors that I'm going for. I'm going to just get my brush all prepared here. Oops, I seem to have dropped my paper towel, so I'm gonna get another paper towel while we're speaking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be creating kind of snow icicle stuff at the top of the sides of the um, stairs, but I want to create the, the, the tops of the stairs themselves first, and then we'll do uh, these little kind of railings in a minute. The, the steps should, in essence, kind of get smaller and smaller as they go up the stairway, but I'm not terribly concerned about them being perfectly measured apart from one another. What I'm really most interested in is getting a nice platform where my queen is going to stand. So that's going to be this bottom um, step um, near the, the bottom of the canvas. So I'm going to have the tops platforms of the steps lighter than the, than the side of them. So I'm going to have my first step somewhere in through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about halfway between here and here, give myself a little bit of a marker. I have my light blue on my brush right now. And then I'm just going to give myself a light kind of sketchily um, application or line going across the canvas like that. I'm now going to pick up my light green and I'm going to, I don't want a solid color in through here, so I'm just kind of going back and forth. I actually just added a bit of water to my brush so I can get this to um, kind of go smoothly across without having to pick up a ton more paint. This just allows me to kind of spread it and give myself some good uh, color variations to it. So that's going to be my, my first step. And then I want to do uh, another one a little distance away. So I'm going to be alternating back and forth between my light blue and my light green. So I'm going to go up maybe about an inch, inch and a half, give myself uh, the starting of this step. I just picked up a little bit of my light green, and now I'm going to pick up a little bit of water. So that way I can just kind of spread it out. I don't want it to look like it is a firm... Um, line. I want it to just look like there's some icicles or some iciness to the, to the platform of that step. And as I go through these steps, the top part I'm going to have lighter, and then I'll come back and I'll kind of finesse the, um, the, the front part of it. So again, just kind of light blue, uh, and I think actually I want this one to be a little bit higher. Just bring this up, this one up just a little bit higher. And you could certainly use your bristle brush. I was actually contemplating using my bristle brush for this step because it would push the paint a little bit further. But I know I'm going to be getting into some small steps in a, in a minute, so I felt that this 
uh, medium brush would, would work out a little bit better. So again, just alternating back and forth between my blue, my light blue, and my light green. Once I get up to here, I'm just going to kind of go quickly across, not even really caring if it's, if it's perfectly spaced. It would make sense for them to go um, closer together as, as you're going up higher, but again, it doesn't have to be anything perfect. I'm just kind of going back and forth, uh, providing myself with this little bit of a light area where the top of that step would be and then I'm just going to kind of quickly do these ones up at the top and again I just keep alternating before between the light blue and the light green to give me a variety of tones and I'm thinking that this is just going to kind of disappear up behind here so I didn't really do much in through there. Now what I'm going to do just to make sure that I've got them colored in all the way I'm not going to wash my brush I'm going to pick up a little bit of my um, original color combination which was green blue and brown on my dirty brush just to kind of get this this front area to make sure that it blends as much as I want it to so I still have that where the stair the, the uh, platform ends but if I want there to be a little kind of um, transition down into that bottom step I can certainly use these colors to help me out with that um, just to make it look a little bit more natural or if I needed any second kind of coat on it in order to finish it up so that's what I'm doing just kind of making sure that I have it satisfying my painterly eye you could even bring some in a downward motion just to give the illusion of like maybe a little frostiness or um, icicleiness on there so Feel free to, you know, make these as vibrant or as subtle as you want. Your queen is going right in the middle of these. So if yours is not, um, if your steps aren't perfect, she's really going to steal the show. So don't worry about um, it, about these being imperfect <laughs> because they're just background noise at this point. So that's looking pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some, um, some icicles or... Uh, I'm going to do the railing part. I'm going to be using the same color combination, which is my light blue and my light green, and I'm going to alternate. I have light blue on my brush right now, and I'm really just going to kind of skip it along the top of these, um, of these railings to indicate that maybe there's some, some ice kind of sitting on the top of those railings. This I'm leaving a little bit of the dark color down below on this particular um, top side. As I come around this corner here, the top of the railing is then going to switch to here. So as I come around this corner in through here, again, I'm just switching back and forth between my light blue and my light green so I can have some good color variations. And I'm also making this area <coughs> wider as it comes down this uh, area here because it's making it look like it's getting closer and closer to the viewer. And then I can pull down some little icicles. So just these little pointy type of um, shapes. Don't go crazy with it, um, but you can certainly add as many as you want. I'll put them in through here. I will also put them kind of coming down this uh, edge in through here as if they are dripping or um, being formed off of the side of the stairs in through here. So put as many as you want, make them bold, make them subtle. It's up to you. I actually think I want some of these down a little bit further. So I'm just making them kind of wider at the top and then uh, lifting the pressure off of my brush. I'm going to pick up some of my ultramarine blue on my brush too. I feel like I want some of these to be a little bit bluer. So I'm using uh, some ultramarine blue on my brush as well as the light blue and the light green. That's looking pretty good. Maybe one more down this side and maybe a couple more down into here. Once you get going with icicles, it's like, oh, I don't want to stop. There's so much fun. You can have as many as you want. And you can see how that dark color behind there helps to make them pop out a little bit more. I'm going to do the same thing over on this other top side. So just light blue, light green. I'm staying on the top side of this dark area the whole way on this side. So again, just dark blue, I mean uh, light blue, light green, wiggling my brush at the top of this um, railing. 
And then as I come down this left hand side, I'm going to push my brush a little bit harder so I have a wider type of mark that I'm creating coming down and through here. And then again, just going back and forth between my my light green and my light blue, making it pretty big in through here. And then I can start pulling down some uh, icicles. So again, as many as you want, just these kind of long uh, squiggly lines that are a little bit pointier at the end is gonna give the illusion of some nice icicles. And I'm gonna add these same kind of icicles up at the top of the canvas. So again, light blue and light green is going to be my dominant colors. I right now just started with light blue. I will add um, some light green ones. You can make them as long as you want. Um, you can have them being a little more transparent, which means you'll see some of that background through it, but that's gonna be up to you. You can really fill in the top with making uh, a lot of them up towards the top and then just more uh, narrow ones coming down. It's gonna be up to you how, how icicle-y you want your, your queen's surroundings to be. I'm gonna bring these all the way over to the side. And I think the biggest thing is just to not make them consistently the same space apart, make some of them longer, some of them shorter, some of them, I'm picking up some more ultramarine blue, maybe some with more blue in them, some with more green. You could certainly pick up the um, phthalo green on its own as well. That's gonna be up to you how intense you want these to be. And then I would just kind of keep Fiddling with this, seeing how many that I want to put on here. I think, you know, this is looking pretty good, but I might want a few more overlapping each other. Uh, we will be putting a lot of um, sparkles and things of that nature on later. So don't feel like if it's not as exciting as you had hoped it would be yet, don't feel like it's not gonna get there because we will definitely be adding a lot more drama to it as we go through the process, but this is just gonna get us started. And then once you've got this done, you can, um, we're gonna be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So you can put this medium brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our ice queen. I'm gonna be using my chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is convenient for you or that is most comfortable for you. I just tend to use my chalk a lot because <laughs> I like it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers and basic shapes so we can create an outline that'll be easy to utilize during the coloring in process of painting. We're not gonna be going for any fine tuned detail. We're just gonna go for some nice basic shapes and create ourselves something that resembles a queen. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself the center of my canvas. So for me, that's right about here. So left to right, top to bottom, wherever that center is for you. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up about two inches and over to the left about a half of an inch. This is gonna be my first marker right in through here. Then I'm gonna go directly to the left of that about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, somewhere in this vicinity. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come directly below these two. What we're doing initially is we're making ourselves a rectangle type of a shape to build off of. So I'm gonna come down, I'm about two, two and a half inches away from the bottom of my canvas, or I'm where I want her, the, the level of where her feet to go, which is right on this um, platform of this bottom step. So yours might be positioned a little bit differently. You can just put them somewhere in the middle of that bottom step. And then I'm gonna connect all four of these dots. So I'm gonna end up with a really long rectangular type of a shape. And don't worry if yours is not perfectly straight on, on the sides. Mine is not gonna be either. This is just used so we can um, build off of it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the right side of her body. I have her leaning to the side. So what I'm going to do from this marker right in through here is I'm going to give myself a little bit of a shoulder in through there and I'm going to bring it back into this, um, this line 
in through here, which is representational of her bottom of her back. And then I'm going to bring it. So if this is about halfway up or down my rectangle, I'm about an inch above that, which is where I'm going to have her rear end start emerging from, from that um, rectangle. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to give myself a little marker here so I can talk about what I'm going to do next. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring, this is going to be her rear end, I'm going to bring it down almost to this bottom step and then I'm going to kick her dress out and I'm going to bring the corner of her dress way over here. So that's the line that I'm going to be making right now. So I'm going to take it from here. I'm going to bump it out a little bit for her rear end. Then I kind of come down in a horizontal line. And just before I get to this step, I'm going to start curving it out. And then I'm going to just give it a nice kind of gradual line into this marker over in through here, which will be the corner of her dress. I'm going to do a similar exercise on the left hand side. And um, again, she's leaning back and we'll put her arms on in a minute. But right now, we're just going to go from um, this kind of corner in through here. This is going to look a little awkward in her shoulder area right now, but we'll correct it in a little while. So I'm going to take from here, imagine this to be kind of her chest area. And then I'm going to just ride this down this line next to this line. I don't need to um, go back into it. Right about here is kind of where her waist is. So this is where I'm going to start to bump it out as if this is kind of her, her leg. She's in kind of a posed position. I'm going to create the corner of my, um, my dress is going to be in through here. So somewhere around here, it's almost about halfway between here and the edge of my canvas. So I'm going to do a similar exercise to what I did over here. I'm going to drop this down. This is maybe her um, kind of waist area. And then I'm going to kick it out for where maybe her leg is making the garment move and then just kind of bring it back over here. I'm going to connect here to here with a wavy type of line that's going to be just below my uh, edge of my stair. So this way, when we paint, we can give the illusion that the dress is kind of draped over that step a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of give myself a nice wavy line that's just below that step and through there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the train of her dress as if while she's coming down these steps, some of the train on her dress is kind of billowing down the steps behind her. So what I can do is I can find any step that I want. So I'm going to kind of pick this one right around her rear end and I'm going to do the pointy end of her train. I will, in my head, I see it as kind of flat on the front part of the step and then it kind of bumps out over the edge of the step. So that's what I'm going to do in my head. So I've got it over here. It's going to kind of kind um, come over in through here and then it would kind of lay on this step like this and then maybe kind of come down in through there and over there. And then I can do a similar thought process over here. And when we paint it in, it'll make a whole lot more sense and you'll be able to kind of um, see what what this is representing as it's going over those steps. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the um, the neckline of her of her gown on. So I want her to have like this collared neck that kind of wraps around her head. So on this right hand side from this little corner in through here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this um, just the essence of uh, a part of her garment that is just kind of coming out like a little collared type of a look. And then I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. So I'm going to come about halfway between here and here. I'm going to bring this up like that. And then I'm going to give myself kind of a little scalloped edge to it and bring it back to this corner, this meeting corner in through here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little shape for her face. So I'm going to just give myself a little oval type of a shape in through there and then a shape for her head a little bit larger like that. We're going to put hair and stuff. If you wanted to, you could certainly make a couple of marks for hair, but I don't think that's really that necessary at this point. Now I'm going to put uh, her front arm on. 
So this is her shoulder in through here. I'm going to give um, her a elbow, which is going to be somewhere in, in this vicinity. So I'm just going to kind of give myself a diagonal line like that, a forearm like this. And as I come up in this vicinity for her, her wrist and her hand, I'm a little bit higher than this mark in through here and out to the left about an inch, inch and a half. I don't need to do much for her hands. I'm just kind of putting little markers in place so I, I know where I want them later. So something like that will tell me where I want her hand. And then her other arm has to come from this shoulder in through here. So I'm going to just kind of extend this up in through here, up a, a little bit higher than her head. I'm gonna bring a little line in through here for where her elbow is, bring it up in this direction and they're kind of boxy right now just because we're we just need markers right now in order to um, get us started in the painting process and then you can certainly once you uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, medium brush and I'm going to add a little bit of water to it so I can erase some of these guidelines so I'm going to erase this big center rectangle that we created just so I can see what I just did. I don't need this line. This is her arm, so I can erase that whole line. I can erase this line in through here, so that's going to show me where her arm is. That's her shoulder. This is her um, kind of her the inside of her um, dress. I can erase this line in through here. I could probably erase this line here too. And I'm thinking that's pretty enough that I need to erase. And then what we're gonna do for the next step, because this is her dress, that's her dress, maybe just connect this kind of in a little bit of a V in through there so that makes it the, so you can see that neckline better. There we go. And then we're gonna use our uh, medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our queen. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are red, yellow, white, brown, my light blue, and my light green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be making a custom skin color that we'll be using for her face and her hands. We'll be using brown as a base coat for her hair, and then we'll be using our light green and our light blue for the dress. I'm going to pre-mix myself my custom skin color. Well, I've already done that, but I'll show you how I get there. <laughs> so this is the uh, skin color I'm going to be using. How I got to that was I used a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of white. And then I just spun them together. So when I do this, I oftentimes don't start out with exactly the right color. So to me, that's a little yellow. So I'm going to add a touch more red and a touch more white to it to add a little bit more pink to it. And that's too dark, so I'm gonna add more white. <laughs> and then I just keep adjusting it until I get it into what I consider to be a believable skin tone. And how I um, kind of determine if it's a believable skin tone is I take my paint and I just hold my brush up to my skin. That's my closest reference I have, and I know that my skin is believable, so <laughs> it's close to that. Then I'm I'm in a good zone. You can certainly make yours lighter or darker or pinker or redder or yellow or whatever works for you, but this is where I'm headed with mine. Once I've got that color, I'm going to be painting in a base coat for her face. We will be putting hair that's going to kind of uh, overlap some of her face. We're of course going to be putting a little eye, nose, and mouth, but this again is just something that's going to get us started. You can certainly cover up your um, chalk marks if you want to. Then I'm going to also do the same thing for her hands. Uh, as I do her hands, if I wanted to change brushes and use a smaller brush, I could certainly do that. I also will most likely um, not paint over all of my chalk or re, re, um, uh, size the hand as I'm doing this. I'm going to have a couple little fingers coming up on the other side. So if I don't 
want to use all of my chalk mark, I can erase it in a minute with just a little bit of water. So I'm going to just put that hand where I want it to be. And if I need to erase some of the chalk in a little bit, I certainly will. So I'm going to have her wrist kind of coming out like this. And of course, I, again, I could be using a smaller brush if I wanted to, but when I do the details on it, I'll be using a smaller brush then. So that's, I'm just going to have her kind of, well, I can't demonstrate, but <laughs> something like that is going to work. She's got lots of sparkles and stuff coming out her hand. So again, if it's not perfect, that's fine. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be painting the base coat for her hair. I'm going to be using just brown paint. So I'm just going to be creating a layer of paint in through here. I, again, don't need it to be perfect at this point. Just having something on here that is going to be um, help me through the process works. I'm going to paint it right into this little crevice as if maybe she's flinging her hair. It's kind of over her face a little bit. It's also going to be going behind um, her her crown. It's going to be going behind this edge of the... Um, of her dress, this little um, collar area. So I, when I do my crown also, I'm gonna be putting my crown strategically placed over her hairline. So I don't have to worry about that being perfect either. And then I'm gonna put some back here um, coming over behind her arm and maybe just kind of uh, dancing <laughs> behind her. I'm going to let the, the gravity take over, give myself a couple of long straggly pieces. It'll be darker too later. Um, I know that my brown is transparent or translucent. We'll be adding uh, black to it later to uh, get it to have enough opacity on it and to add some more dimension to it. So that's looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna be painting in the dress. So I'm gonna use my custom light green for this collar area. So this way it stands apart from the rest of the, of the dress. So I'm just kind of bringing this down. And again, when we add all of the details later, this will look a lot more um, dimensional, but right now I'm just getting a layer of paint on here, allowing for uh, this collar to kind of merge behind her arm. We'll put some shadow in there later too. Uh, this side of it is gonna go kind of in front of her face a little bit. So I'm just making sure that I bring this all the way up in front of her face, covering that edge of her hair, and then just bringing it up in this whatever flowing kind of way you want. I'm gonna bring this kind of in a downward motion. And one side doesn't have to be the same as the other. You use your imagination with however you want that to appear. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna pick up some of the light blue. I'm gonna start on the, um, on the train of the dress. The colors for the dress can be whatever, whatever you'd like them to be. So you can certainly make yours, maybe you want your dress to be like a lavender type of a color. And if so, make it lavender. That's gonna be a, a judgment call on your part. If you want it to be, um, you know, a pink dress, you could certainly make it pink, but I'm gonna just be using the lighter tones of the, um, of the icicles to, to make mine. Now, as I reload my brush, as I'm going, you know, going towards the top part of the brush, I'm just gonna, uh, towards the, top part of the dress, not the brush. I'm gonna just pick up blue paint and I'm gonna leave a little bit of a, um, uh, evidence of my chalk from this part of the dress to the other part of the dress just so um, when I go to put all the movement in the dress, I will not have forgotten which section is which. So I'm considering this to be kind of the train and it's all right if you have streakiness in your paint right now, that's that's the name of this game. We just layer and layer and layer until all of our streakiness is gone and we have all the movement and stuff that we want included in um, our fabric or, or our painting. And I just keep picking up my light blue and you'll probably see every now and again, a little bit of the light green releases itself from my brush because I didn't wash my brush. I'm gonna bring this down in this area. I'm also gonna be adding a couple of little icicle-y things coming off the end of my 
of my garment, but I'm gonna, I'm not sure if I'm gonna start that now or if I'm gonna wait for when I do my final details, but um, again, just keep picking up my, my light blue at this point, bringing it all the way to the edge of my chalk mark. And then as I'm coming up the dress in through here, I'm gonna just use my directional brush stroke, which means I'm gonna pull it or paint it in the direction that I feel that fabric would be falling. So I'm gonna kind of do an up and down type of a motion. So that way, if I do have a little bit of um, streakiness or you can in some places have the evidence of some of that color behind it, it won't matter because I'm, it'll just look like maybe a little dip in the dress or a little shadow here or a little highlight there. So using the directional brush stroke helps to eliminate um, or help to balance those um, uh, imperfect or not perfect spots. And then again, just bring this right to the edge. I'm trying to get pretty clean edges around the side of the fabric. Sometimes I use, um, I, I like soft edges, but in this case, I'm going for kind of cleaner edges. So it looks like it's um, a nice piece of fabric. And then when I get to her arm in through here, I'm gonna do the same thing, which is leave a tiny evidence of that chalk mark. So that way I know where I wanted that arm to be placed. And again, we'll be, when we do our future steps, allowing for more definition in those particular areas. But right now, just kind of getting my base coat on here, that'll make it nice and simple for me to build my dimension on the dress. When I get to this shoulder area, same thing. Um, if I feel I, I, you know, need some of those um, guidelines visible, you can go ahead and leave them. But I think, I'm thinking in this spot, I'm pretty safe with just kind of covering this all up, except for this one line where the, where the arm meets the, um, the side of the body. So something like this will help because we're going to just put a little shadow underneath there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do her wrist. So as I, or her arm, as I do her arm, really you can, I mean, this is your, your queen. You can have her wearing whatever you want. So as you're going through this process, if you want, you know, her sleeves to be long and flowy like her dress, add some details to it. Add, you know, little tassels or whatever coming off the edges of it or you know add different you don't have to have this wide um cuff on the edge like i have you could you could have yours more narrow if you want it to look like she's wearing something warmer because she is in an icy atmosphere <laughs> you could make her clothing look puffier like it's got like a sweater or you know like a jacket that's going to have more volume to it so don't ever feel the need to have to do yours exactly as mine you can take mine as a kind of a jumping off point and if you want to make yours into something different that's you know that's what's going to make it into your painting you know you can use these um, these tutorials as just little guides and inspiration and then make it into your own thing. As I come down this arm in through here, I'm going to just make sure that I kind of get it to go behind uh, this area here so it looks like it's on the other side of her body. And as you're going through this, if you feel that, you know, something needs to be wider or thinner, in, in width that the arm is too big or too small, you can certainly adjust it. Usually your gut feeling is, is pretty accurate when it comes to, um, you know, looking at figures and stuff like that. I think I actually want to pull this uh, green part out a little bit more. I just picked up more of my light green to get this front part out a little bit more in through there. And then we're going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our face, hair, and hands. <laughs> I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are my skin tone, brown, black, white, and red. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna give her just a 
um, the essence of a, a very pretty face that maybe she's very into what she is magically doing right now and her eyes are going to be closed. <laughs> so we don't need to do any eye pupils or anything like that. We're just going to give some minimal detail that'll give her a feminine looking face. We'll add a little bit of highlights and shadows on her hands. Again, those are going to be disguised by lots of sparkles later and then we'll give her um, we'll finish her hair so that way we'll have um, something to put her crown on. What I'm going to first do is I'm going to outline her face so I have a, a shape that is going to um, give me the exterior shape of the face. I'm also going to give a little bit of shadow as it's coming down into here. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. I have, I've already kind of marked mine a little bit so I made sure that I had it in a, in a decent um, size ratio. So what I'm going to do is just kind of clean up the edge of this hairline in through here and just bringing this over to the right and then I'm just going to kind of close this off with a little bit of darkness and then right where I feel that that eye is going to go I'm going to just pull the the profile of that shape in just a little bit. So that's going to give you that little bit of an indent where the where the eye will sit, something like that. I'm going to put a tiny bit of water on my brush just so I can get this to go right in through there. That's good. I'm going to do a similar exercise on her neck. So again, just uh, black and brown. And I'm just going to pull this in where I feel that her, her jawline and her chin would would be so somewhere in this vicinity and then I'm just going to darken this little piece of skin down in through here. You could certainly, I'm going to actually put a little bit of water on my brush just to get this side of the face. This side of the face is going to be pretty hidden underneath the hair but I'm just uh, getting kind of a smooth edge in through there. Now what I'm going to do with this uh, black brown water mixture on my on my um, brush is I'm going to put in place where I want her little eyes to go. So I'm going to have them about a third of the way down this shape. I'm going to put just a little a little kind of horizontal mark in through there as well as in through here. I'm also going to put um, her eyebrow on. So I've got little little eyebrow in through here. This is going to go towards the um, inside of the nose. I'm going to put a little tiny eyebrow in through here. Now what I'm going to do is I don't want a lot of darkness elsewhere um, except for maybe just a tiny bit on this right bottom cheek in through here. So I hardly have any paint on my brush. I'm just kind of giving a little bit of contour in through there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pick up a tiny bit of black paint and give a little bit of maybe eyelashes or a little bit more darkness where those eyes are. So this is just giving me just a little bit more darkness right where the eyes are so they look a little bit darker than maybe the eyebrows themselves. I'm just kind of polka dotting what would be maybe little eyelashes or something of that sort. So nothing really major. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pick up just a dot of red paint. So this, I'm going to give her a little bit, a uh, little tiny mark for her mouth. So just a tiny bit of red paint is going to come right in through here. You don't have to have her having red lips. You could have her having, you know, pink lips, whatever color works for you. Just pulling that out just a little bit. Now I'm going to make myself a light pink color. So I've got red on my brush and I'm going to uh, mix it with a bit of white paint. This is going to be my little highlight for my face, for her tip of her nose and her cheeks. So, and this will give a little bit of contour on her face. So this is just a little light pink color. Red and white makes my light pink in through there. I'm going to use this to create her nose. So I've got a little bit of that light pink on there. So what I'm going to take is just kind of bring it down the bridge of her nose and then wipe it off on my paper towel and then just give it a little rub into the side of her face that creates a little bit of a nose and if it goes too light for you just pick up some of that skin tone you can even rub this up into her forehead to make it look like her forehead is bumping out a little bit i'm going to use that same light pink on her cheek so i've got a little bit of light pink on my brush and i can put that on her cheek and that's going to make her cheek pop out so using these little uh 
value changes will allow you to create the form on a on a person's face without doing much work. I'm now going to pick up a little bit of my regular skin tone just to make sure that that pink just blends in where I want it to and also to make sure that I have a good coverage on her skin. So this is just a little bit of my skin tone or to reshape anything that I felt didn't get shaped the, exactly the way that I want. And then you could even put a little tiny touch of white right on the tip of her nose. That'll give you a little kind of glow on the tip of her nose just to kind of make it look like it is sparkling with whatever the um, whatever magic she's got in the atmosphere. So that's all I'm going to do to her face. She's looking pretty to me. What I'm going to do now is put a couple, I'm going to finish her hair while I'm here. So I washed and dried my brush. I'm going to put some black paint on my brush and get it to be really dark underneath this edge in through here so I can so it can look like there's um, kind of shadow from her dress and I just kind of pull this down making sure that it covers that part now I'm picking up just brown paint on my dirty brush give myself kind of a second coat on these other straggler pieces that are hanging out over there I'm gonna pick up more black paint just to get um, some little shadows in this neck area where I feel that her hair, if it was, you know, kind of wrapping around her, would have some little shadows in through here. Now I'm going to pick up brown paint. I'm going to um, pull a couple of pieces in front of her face. You don't have to pull any in front of her face, but I think it, it helps to tell the story of her being in, in motion. So I'm just going to pull just a couple of little ones crossing over her face like this. Again, not necessary, especially if you did a great job on her face, but if you needed to hide her face, this is a great way to do it. This is all gonna be hidden by the crown, but I wanna make sure that I've got it finished. So I just picked up more brown paint just to make sure I have a full coverage on this hair up in through here. And then I'm gonna pick up a little brown and white on my brush just to put tiny little highlights on a couple of these pieces of hair. So brown and white are going on my brush at the same time and I'm going to just kind of pull a little bit of m movement in the hair in through here. So this is just brown and white. Oh, there goes my doggies. <laughs> Must have somebody delivering something. So I'm just, again, just a little bit of brown and white to put on a couple of these little pieces in through here. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, finish her hands. So as I'm doing this. Let me just get these last little. Actually, I think I'm going to pause the video. Um, maybe, maybe not. I need to do, I'm going onto her hands now. So now that I've got her hair done, maybe not. I think, I think the dog's quieted enough. So now that I've got the hair done, I'm going to go ahead and go to the hands. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown and black so I can get the, the shadowy areas. So I'm going to just put a little brown and black down towards where the, the hand goes into the garment like this and then just kind of pull it up this bottom side. And then if you felt you could use it somewhere else on that hand, perfect. And then on this one, I'm just going to kind of put it on what I feel to be the underside of some fingers and through there. And then I'm going to just pick up my uh, skin tone. I washed and dried my brush. I picked up my skin tone. Do a second layer on those. Make sure they're fully covered. This finger I think needs to be a little longer in through there. And now I'm going to pick up just a little bit of white um, on my dirty brush just to give a little extra sparkle or brightness on the tip or on the top side of those fingers maybe a little bit on the top side of this one. And then we're going to be using our, um, we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish her dress and we're going to paint her crown. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm going to use are light blue, light green, white, and brown. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. 
I'm going to um, first put a base coat for her crown on, and then we'll come back and we'll do some shadows and highlights and stuff on her dress, and then we'll, we'll finish her crown off with some shiny stuff. So I'm going to pick up um, some of my light green to start her crown. I'm going to, like I had mentioned, give a strategically placed line that's going to go right across her, her hairline. So I'm going to start it somewhere, I would say, in through here and then just bring it right across her, um, her hairline and then just tuck it right back on the other side. You can make your crown into whatever you'd like. This is up to you. You have fun with the shape of it. I'm gonna now just kind of do the exterior edges of it. So I'm gonna just kind of bring this in like this, bring it down that way. You can have clean lines, you can have soft lines. I'm gonna just try and make it look like she's wearing a fancy crown. <laughs> I'm gonna start over here, give it an upward motion like that, and then that kind of sets the stage for the whole thing. And then I can um, sit here and make decorative lines. I want it to kind of look like it's around her head though. So I'm gonna kind of take this and bring it down to this center line like that. Maybe do the same thing over in through here. Bring this down like this. And then I think I'm just gonna kinda have fun with making these kinda curved lines like that from this part in through here. And again, this is your crown. You can do it whatever way that you would like. Maybe put this one a little there we go, that, that works for me. I'm just gonna fluff up this up top part. I'm gonna put um, some blue in a second, just pulling in this green. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm gonna pick up some of the light blue and I'm gonna put some light blue streaks within my crown. I'm gonna let this set for a minute before I come back and do my final details on it. This just, gets me started, gets me understanding how large I want my, oops, that was green, I didn't mean that, I meant light blue. <laughs> this will get me um, started with how large I want it. You can, if you need it to cover more of her um, hair, you can certainly bring these down a little bit further, but you'll see when I put the decorative elements on it, it gives it a little bit more fanciness. So now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up brown with a little bit of my light blue, so brown and light blue. I'm gonna add my shadows onto my dress. I'm gonna put shadows underneath her arm to make it uh, appear that her arm is casting a shadow on her body and that this also is the contour of her body. So it'll go a little bit more um, dipped in in this area. I just picked up a little bit more of my light blue just to get these to blend a bit more in through here. So just sticking this right underneath her arm in through here and then I will blend it down into her dress. So I like to use the side of my brush um, in order to kind of just rub that paint in. You might find uh, that a better method works for you, but that works for me when I'm doing these smaller areas. I'm picking up more of my brown plus my light blue to get a little shadow uh, on her shoulder from her, um, from her collar. So this is gonna give me a shadowed area kind of on the back side of her from her collar, as well as, you know, maybe the back side of her from her hair or something like that. And then I'm gonna just pick up more of my light blue just to make sure that this arm is fully colored in, bring it all the way up to there. That works out. I didn't wash my brush, so this is just kind of these colors blending in, making sure that they work well together. I'm gonna put some more, a little bit shadow on the inside of this armpit kind of area. So again, light blue plus a little bit of brown and what I'm really doing right now is I'm, I'm just making sure that all the areas that I want to look like they've got a little bit of depth or a little bit of dimension that I've, I, that I've accomplished that. So if you feel that the bottom side of the arm would be a little bit darker, you can put a little bit more of that color in through there. And I'm, I'm doing it also for contour. So I'm gonna pick up more of that light blue plus brown. So if this is her rear end and her dress kind of comes down towards this step, it might dip in right where it meets that step. So I'm going to tell that story to the viewer. I'm putting my, I have my light blue 
and brown on my brush. And this is where you can start to get rid of your, um, your guidelines. So I'm going right over that guideline right now and I'm gonna give a little dip in that dress right where it's kind of meeting that step with this um, light blue and brown combination on my brush. And I can also continue to pick up that light blue just to get it to, to blend in. I'm gonna add my green in a minute and my, um, my other colors in a minute, but right now just adding these shadows, light blue and brown, went back on my brush to get a little shadow on this part of the train as it is uh, meeting this, this step in through here. And these little nuances will make a lot of uh, difference in the painting because they're gonna they're gonna add a little bit more life to it. They're gonna add more depth to it. I want to put a little shadow on this one up and through here. So I know that I used green there, but that's okay. I can still use my my brown plus a little bit. So it's at the bottom of this area in through here. Just putting a little bit of brown. I had a little bit of brown and my light blue on my brush. And again, this is gonna get that train to look like it's just kind of flowing down those steps in through there. I'm thinking that that's pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding my, my highlight. Oh, actually, let me finish this little part in through here. I'm now gonna pick up my light green plus brown to give some darkness in through here. So this is this uh, collar area as it's kind of going in um, her into her chest area. So this is light green plus brown. And then if you have any little finessing that you want to do on that, and this that's looking pretty good. All right, so now we're going to go for our highlights. So this is going to be, I'm going to do the dress now. I will go back to that crown in a minute. So I'm going to use my light blue, um, white, and green to get myself some nice highlights. I'm going to be using um, white, where I feel that it will pop out the most, like in her rear end area. I just picked up some white. And then what I can do is I get it to kind of blend into the rest of the, the dress color. So if I want some of the dress color to be blue, I just picked up more blue to add that to it. If I want this to really look like a nice icicle-y kind of dress, now's where I'm gonna pick up my light green. And I can incorporate this light green wherever I want. So if I got light green on my brush right now, I can, I can really just go with the flow of the fabric. Maybe I bring it down in this area. Maybe we've got it just kind of flowing with, with the rest of the dress. I can pick up um, more of that light green, bring it down over in through here. If you want more green, you can pick up a touch of your thalo green. If you wanted that to have an even higher impact in the in the composition or in that dress. I'm picking up some of my light blue now just to make sure that this all kind of flows together. And if it's not, you know, contrasting enough with the exterior color, that's when I pick up a little bit more white. So I'm going back and forth in this highlight stage with white, light blue, and light green. I'm gonna put my brightest bright on this edge where it's going to look like it's going um, over that step. And I'm also pulling my brush stroke in the direction that I feel that that fabric is falling. So I definitely need a little bit of extra here. So I just picked up a little bit extra white. And again, you could certainly have yours in whatever color you want. You want yours really green, make it really green. You want it really blue, make it really blue. It's, it's up to you. And I'll also pull a little bit of icicles down in through here. So this is where I, I just picked up a little bit of my light blue and making sure that I can, I picked up some of my light green. <laughs> you can do any of the colors. That's, that's the beauty of this. You get to kind of have fun with making these icicles the way that you want, or the, you know, maybe you don't want the icicles to come down off of her dress. Maybe you want it all to just look like her dress is just flowing, you know, in, in its own way. And it's not, 
she's not adding extra ice everywhere that she goes. But in my head, I'm thinking she's the ice queen, so she's gonna be laying ice everywhere. If this is the edge of this back step, this is where I'm gonna brighten up the edge of, or the part of the dress. If this is the back step, I, I brighten it up right there. If this is the edge of the step, I brighten it up right here. I do blend it in, but that would be the, the idea to getting the dress to look like it's going over that step is to add that bright area right as right at the edge of the step. And that will get that um, garment to look like it's draping over the edge of it. And then you can, of course, if you do too much, you can just bring back some of the original color. I want this really to scream bright. So I just put some more white on my brush. I wanna make sure that this kind of all flows together. You could, of course, use any brush that works for you as well. So if you're going through this process and you want a brush that pushes the paint a little bit farther, then maybe you need more of like a bristled kind of brush, or you could use a, um, a flat brush if you want more distinct kind of line work to it. But I'm just using this round brush and where I feel I need a little bit more um, fluidity, I just pick up a tiny bit of water on my brush. I'm just getting this edge to kind of disappear where um, the, the front of the fabric goes into that train. I'm even going to get these two to kind of blend along the, this edge in through here like they are one piece. That's looking pretty good to me. This front edge is nice and bright. I'm going to add a little bit of brightness up on her sleeves. So just a little bit more white on my brush to get a little bit of highlight on her sleeves in through here, maybe this arm here, because that one's still see-through, so I need to get that paint to not be see-through anymore. And again, just adding these little bits of highlights will help to, to finish the form on that particular object. Make sure that you've got, it helps you to make sure that you've colored in everywhere 100%, so you don't miss any, any spots. I need to clean up the edge of her clothes there. And then I'm gonna add some Oh, and get rid of any chalk marks that you need to get rid of. I have a little chalk mark there that's still evident. I think I want a little bit lighter on her dress in through here just so we can see this edge of it as much as I want to. And then I'm going to uh, finish her, her little crown and the top of her dress. So I'm just picking up white paint at this point to um, get the edges, little highlights on the edges of her, of her collar in through here. And then I'm going to uh, pick, I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna do a little detail on that front of it. I'm picking up white paint. I'm gonna do a little circle kind of uh, decorative element right above her nose. So this is gonna be that front beautiful jewel type of crown area. And then I'm gonna um, make, let's do, little decorative like that. I'm gonna put a nice bright line in through here, and then I'm gonna put a couple of little lines. And of course, as you're going through this, if you need a smaller brush to do this, feel f to do this um, detail work on here, feel free to do so. I just put a line there. I'm gonna put another line in through here, carry it over on the other side of the head like that, and then I'm gonna put lots of sparkly dots um, at the top of her crown. So just right now I've just got white on my brush, just kind of making some sparkly dots up towards the top as if these are just little twinkling pieces of ice at the top of her beautiful crown. And then if you need to do anything else, you can certainly take this white and just highlight any of these little areas. If they're not showing up, you might need to add a little more contrast to them like I'm doing. And then we are going to be using, uh, we're gonna use this medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some sparkles. <laughs> it's gonna be sparkles everywhere. I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors I'm gonna use are light blue, light green, and white. Of course, you could use any colors that you'd like, but I'm just going for some color coordination throughout my painting. So I'm gonna be making um, lots of sparkles. I really kinda wanna make it like 
you know, she's the queen and she's the sparkle creator. So, and the ice creator. So I'm going to have her sparkles coming from her hands and they're going to just kind of be morphing into all of this ice. <laughs> So we're going to start with some light blue paint and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start making a whole bunch of polka dots and I'm going to kind of trail them from her hand in a chaotic kind of way. When I'm doing these I'm pushing straight into the canvas so that way I get like a nice circular type of mark. You of course could make your marks in any way that you want but what I'm doing first is I'm kind of setting the stage to where I want them to go. So I'm going to have them kind of trailing into this area down in through here. So this is going to in essence kind of tell the viewer that she's made all of this um, ice kind of happen. You can, if you want small dots, just kind of poke it straight in. If you want larger dots, you can kind of swirl your brush around in, in a circle. And I'm going to be using other colors as well. And we're going to be doing kind of a little starburst type of a um, sparkle mark as well. But right now I'm just kind of using my blue to my light blue to, to set the stage in through here. And I'm doing different kind of size dots. So that way, um, you know, it looks like they're just, there's different kinds of size sparkles all over the place. <laughs> I'm going to put them on top of some of my ice in through here, but you know, you could certainly overdo it. I don't think you could ever overdo sparkle dots, but if you can kind of keep the um, trajectory of the direction of um, uh, cut the ones coming out of her hand, that would be great. And then I'm going to put some up in the top. Again, I might not overdo it um, everywhere just because I want there to be some sort of flow to it, but that's going to be your decision while you're making your own sparkle dots. <laughs> so I'm coming out of this hand now with some small ones, again, just to kind of set the stage. I want these ones to kind of travel in an upward motion, but they've got, you know, they've got movement to them, so I can have some kind of coming down, and then maybe the, the distinct trail of them goes in this upward kind of curved way up into this... Um, corner of the ice world that she is in. Maybe we've got some bigger ones up in through here. And again, see your sparkles. You make them however you want. Maybe we've got, you know, a couple kind of over here. Maybe we've got some that they, maybe they fell from here and they're on top of here. <laughs> sparkles are fun. You can make them any way, any which way that you want. I'm going to put a couple up in through here. That's looking pretty good. So now that I've got some blue ones, I'm going to put some green ones. I don't even have to wash my brush. I just wiped it off on my paper towel. I'm going to put a whole bunch of tiny uh, green. This is the light green color that I'm using. And I'm using it in the same manner, same kind of trajectory that I had the, um, that I had the light blue ones in. I'll put some kind of coming up in through here. I will put a couple in through there. And it's fun because as you're, as you're going through this process, that's a lot of paint on my brush. As you're going through this process, you might find, hey, I want some lavender sparkle dots because we had lavender as that base coat. So if you're, if you're going through this process and you want to incorporate other colors, it's really safe to incorporate other colors that are from within the painting. So that'll show the harmony throughout your colors. It'll show, you know, it'll give some nice cohesion to the, the color palette throughout it. So that's an easy way to just kind of um, add to it and make it your own by just kind of utilizing uh, similar colors that you had already used within the painting. And then I'm going to put some green circle spots up in through here, make as many as you want. And then I will, in a minute, we're going to do the really shiny marks, which will be just um, almost like, uh, we're just going to call them sparkle marks. <laughs> They're going to be like, like as if this is glass and it's got a bright, um, you know, burst of light coming off of it because it's so darn shiny and you can of course you know fiddle with yours as much as you want so this is looking pretty good as uh, for the for the polka dot kind of sparkles now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my um 
my starburst ones. So I'm gonna, um, I guess I'll just start with my green because it's on my brush. I'm going to pick some strategic spots and I'm going to make, um, I make a little, oh, that's not going to be a good spot for you to see. I'll put it right in through here. I'm going to make a dot and then I pull one, two, three, four. That's how I'm going to start it. We're going to put shiny white on it in a minute. And as you're doing this, if you want to um, use your smaller brush, feel free to do so. So if you're going through this, like that was kind of a, a little bit bigger one than I had anticipated, you could certainly switch to your small brush. I'm going to be using um, both my, my light green and my light blue for this. Actually, I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going, I'm switching. Um, no, I'm not switching yet. I'll probably switch when I do the top one, but I am washing my brush. I'm washing and drying my brush because I felt like it was making them too wide, which meant that I probably had too much paint in the bristles. So I just washed and dried my brush and I, that will repoint my brush because I don't want the little brush yet. <laughs> so I'm going to put another one in here. So where I started that one, even though you can't really see it yet, I'll, you'll see it later. <laughs> I'm going to put one over here. Yeah, that worked out better. I just needed to wash my brush. That's all I needed to do. And of course, you could make these in any direction that you wanted, um, but I, you can also have more than four little sparks coming off it too. But if you're this type of, um, sparkle that I'm doing here with these uh, kind of systematic four little bursts out of it tend to make this look more like a crystally type of effect because they're all kind of coming out in the same exact way. I'm not quite sure why that is, but it's, it is that way. <laughs> so that's why I'm going for this effect with these, um, just these four type of burst. You'll, if you watch my other videos, you'll, you'll know that when I do bursts of shine, I don't always do this little four, um, four prong thing. Um, but it works well when you're, when you want something to look super shiny like this. So those are some blue ones. I mean, some light green ones. I'm now washing my brush and I'm going to use my light blue and I'm going to put more of these same, um, like diamond type of ones for the light blue. So again, one here and you can put them anywhere. I'm going to even put maybe one or two on her wrists. So that way it looks like, you know, she is the star of making the stars, <laughs> the star of making the shiny parts. That's good in through there. Maybe one right in through here. One, two, three. Ooh, that one's going to be a little crooked. That's okay. No worries. Um, let's see, maybe a couple over in through here. So just pulling out these four prongs. And once I've got this done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make them shine. You can have one over here. Have them wherever you want. Yours don't have to be in the same spots as mine. Maybe we'll put one up in through here, wherever you want it to look like something sparkles, then go ahead and do it. Maybe we've got one somewhere in, I'll just use that dot and through there, giving myself my four little things. I'm going to put a couple kind of coming right in her, right in her hand like that or out of her hand. I'm going to put little white ones in through there. I think, I think, and that's looking pretty good. Maybe, maybe we've got another one over big one over here. So I'm still just light blue right now. Hmm. I think that's looking pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush. This is where I'm going to switch to my small brush so I can get um, the little interior ones. So I'm just going in white. I'm just um, going to be using white for this step and I put my little center in the middle and then I'm just pulling it out. So when I pull it out, it's going to be, it's going to take up less of a footprint than the colored part. So this way it's going to make it look, it'll illuminate that colored part. So again, just a little white dot and then pulling it out. And because I'm using a smaller brush, it will make my mark smaller, which will help to sell the story of being able to see that other color that I had used in it. And of course you might find that you want more of these sparkles, um, than I have. That'll be again, a judgment call on your part as you're going through this, you know, you might, you might get 
overwhelmed with with glee <laughs> when you're making these darn sparkle dots. So just, you know, if you're feeling it and you want more, you just make as many as you want because you can see how much it just gives your painting this really uh, feminine shine to it and ice queen sparkle to it. And, you know, just make them as many as you want. I will put a couple of tiny ones um, uh, I think I want one up in through here too. You can make the, the smaller ones with white paint. So you don't even have to, like if I want a little tiny one up here, I don't need to start it with that base color. But I think the big ones look pretty good with that, um, with that color underneath them. I don't think you really need it if you're going to do teeny tiny ones. Um, and you don't even really need it if you're going to do the big ones either. I just think that it adds that extra bit of sparkle. <laughs> And you can put, you know, anywhere you want. I'm going to put a couple coming out of her hand. You can put some coming, you know, right on her, on her wrist. Maybe it'll look like, like her, like her wrist is shining. You know, anything that you want, it's up to you. You could put some on her crown if you wanted to. I'm going to put uh, one in through here. And again, if you had trouble spots. Put a sparkle dot in front of it. I want her hand to definitely look like it is, you know, part of the sparkle parade. So we're going to put a sparkle in through there. Maybe we got one coming up in through here. And I just want to make sure I hit all of the ones that I had started up in through here so we don't have um, sparkle dots that are not sparkling <laughs> or sparkle marks. And then I think I'm coming into the home stretch here. I just got a few more to go up in through here. And as I'm doing this, I just keep reloading my brush so I maintain a nice pointy tip to my brush and also that I maintain thick paint. So as you're going through this, if you find that you're pushing really hard on these marks, it probably means that you don't have enough paint on your brush. Um, and if you push hard, you're going to make, well, that wasn't a very successful mark. <laughs> you're going to make a wider than wanted mark. And you can always come back once you've got them on here. If those centers you feel, you know, wait for it to dry. And if those centers aren't bright enough for you, you can just come back and put an even bigger, brighter white circle in that center. So, you know, d don't feel like one pass is all you're allowed to make. You can certainly come back like this little guy here isn't bright enough for me. So I'm just adding some more white on top of them. And you can just keep fiddling with them as much as you want. And once you've got this done, we're going to be using this same small brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it. If you can ever stop these little guys and get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going to go bottom left with, uh, I'm going to just go black paint. So I'm using my small brush, bottom left. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date, or a symbol, or whatever you would like for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you'd like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a magical winter woman and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.